part DeLorean renowned chef and part woodsy survivalist, he is complex to say the least. His brooding scowl hides what is a nuanced gear lock that has much more to offer than his krellin souffle or orc soup. In fact, that's how I had him pegged when I started using Carcass. I thought he was all about the recipe cards. And spoiler alert, I think that might be my least favorite part about Carcass. Today, we're gonna dive into Carcass, get into the professions, go over some important skills that I can't live without. And if you wait till the end, I have two skill die that are absolutely necessary if you wanna get damage on the board. And if you really wanna wait till the end, I have a damage hack that has nothing to do with the skill die that you absolutely must use. Let's get into it. Everything to do with Carcass revolves around meat hooks. So we really need to start there. His meat hook die starts set at one. And when Carcass defeats a non-tyrant baddie, you're essentially able to store that baddie on your meat hooks if the dice number would allow it. These baddies are used in various ways, but before we get there, let's figure out how to make that meat hook die go up so you can store more baddies there and become more effective. There are two core ways in order to increase meat hooks. The first and most simple is using a training point. You also have this supply die. This die starts on your mat at zero. You can reduce this die by four to increase meat hooks by one. Pretty simple. Now that we have a couple baddies on the hooks, let's figure out what we can do with them. The first and most obvious way to use these baddies is to cook recipes with. There's a wide range of recipe effects, including dealing damage, manipulating initiative, even increasing your HP, among others. The problem with recipes is you actually have to learn them. And in order to learn them, you have to draw them. There are effects with Carcass where you can look at the top two and pick one, but essentially it's luck based. You don't really know what you're gonna get. Recipes essentially act as loot. During the recovery, you can cook any recipe that you've learned by placing a baddie off of your meat hooks on them. The baddie points and type do have different interactions with the recipe cards. I'll let you explore those on your own. It's tough to build a strategy off of cooking these recipes without already knowing what those recipes are going to be. If you want high variability, you want the added challenge of seeing what recipes you get and then crafting a strategy around that recipe, the chef profession might just be for you. In the chef profession, there's three skill die. They basically all revolve around the same thing. With fast food, you can cook recipes on the fly. This is super helpful if you really love a recipe and you wanna use it a couple different times. With culinary studies, you can either draw the gross food recipe, which works a little different than the other recipes it's not in the recipe deck it's off to the side and you're able to grab it as you get these die results and gross food essentially allows you to heal for two or place an attack die adjacent to you and as the baddie goes into that space it'll take two damage there's also the menu result that allows you to do one of a couple different things you can either draw gross food you can change the result to a bones if you really need it you can learn the top recipe and then if you get the special result you can look at the top two recipes and pick which one you want now my personal favorite is the taxidermist profession in my mind the taxidermist profession is the most interesting and something I'm going to explore a little deeper than the chef profession. Let's take a look at the skin skill die first. With the warm pelt result, you can discard a baddie from the meat hooks and add buff HP to half its HP stat. So if you have some high point baddies in there, that could be awfully effective. With sharp pelt, you get to discard a baddie and roll dice equal to its attack stat. Once again, higher the point baddie, the likeliness that the higher the attack stat is, and that can be awfully powerful. And with a thick pelt result, you can take the baddie that you're discarding's defensive stat and add it right into your active slot. The skin skill alone is one that I've had a ton of luck with and fun with. Simulates another really unique die. You don't ever roll it. You essentially discard a baddie from your meat hooks that matches one of the baddie type. You flip that dice to that baddie type and you get the set baddie skill based upon that type. You can get things like secrete one, compound, lashback one, mischief one, rage three, and thick skin two. I mean, those are some heavy hitting skills that you can have at least for a turn and could be the thing that saves you. And the skill stuff is awesome. I love the thematics of it. You're taking a baddie that you've previously knocked out and is on that meat hook. You can put it on any available space on the battle mat and the other baddies will now treat this as an opposing unit. This skill in particular is super helpful, especially when you don't have the support of another gear lock and you need to get some attention off of you. It's one that I frankly roll every single battle. There's just no reason not to. Then we're moving on to the survivalist profession. There's a couple great complementary skills in shelter and scavenge but I wanna highlight two really great skills to get damage on the board. And I think these are honestly critical. For me, every time I play Carcass, I'm going after both of these. 
If you're running low on health, Hunger Strike is your catch-up mechanic. You can deal the number of damage rolled on the die. Plus, if your health stat is high and you are very low, this could be a really big hit because essentially you get to do the difference of damage between your current HP and your HP stat. And in some cases, if you happen to have trained HP pretty high, that could be huge, a complete game changer and totally flip the board in your favor. Don't sleep on Hunger Strike. To me, it's a must train every single time. Then we have Battlefield Improvisation. This is one that just feels good. You're going to roll a side that corresponds with a trove loot lock. And then you look at the top card in your trove deck, find the corresponding lock, and you can use that number to either add to your attack result or to your defensive result. Battlefield Improvisation has come in very handy for me. And once again, is one that I don't think I'd ever play Carcass without training. Now, I have a bonus for you and it's not a skill die. So we already talked about Carcass's innate, which is the meat hook die. However, the innate plus one is super interesting. With his innate plus one, he gets Captain Hooks. Once per battle when using hook meat backup plan, instead of doing the one true damage, you get to do the damage equal to the difference of your meat hook die counter and the number of baddies on the meat hook. Think about how insane that is. With those last two skill die and this innate plus one, I think Carcass can be really effective for you. And if you really wanna maximize that meat hook die, you have to go into the hunter profession and you have to train hunt. Hunt is highly versatile. You get a couple different results. Scout allows you to scout the area. This will help you to kind of pick the baddie you want, especially if you need a particular type baddie for simulate and scout is locked. There's also a locked result in collect. You can add the top one point baddie each time to your meat hook. That will add the fuel to that meat hook fire for you. And then search party as an immediate result, you can add one to your supplies, which is super critical if you want to max out that meat hook die and really maximize the potential of that innate plus one. For me, carcass, isn't my favorite gear lock. I think he's super interesting. I think there's a lot there. I find myself frustrated more often than not playing Carcass. I'd much rather play Static for the insane DPS or Polaris for the really thinky puzzle. However, I think there's still a virtue to Carcass. For me, I'm going heavy into the taxidermist profession every single time. I'm also going down to hunger strike and battlefield improvisation. I'm getting that hunt skill up in the hunter profession, and I'm really trying to hit that innate plus one and get that meat hook die as high as possible. I think between that innate plus one, battlefield improvisation and hunger strike, Carcass has some real potential to put down a couple of really good hits, especially in those later days. I'd love to hear in the comments how you're using Carcass. Are you enjoying him? What's your strategy there? If you made it this far, I really appreciate you watching. You might want to think about subscribing because there's going to be much more content like this. I'm also going to be broadening out to other games. Also, if you'd like to see Carcass in action, I do have a full solo gameplay on him. Check it out after the video, maybe. And on that note, I'm out.